Hey, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life, and today we're gonna cut a giant hole in the side of my camper. Installing a cable entry or a cable hatch on the side of our camper allows us to pass wires from outside to inside the cabin or vice versa. Now whether or not you need one of these depends on how you use your camper. For me, I like to put portable power stations inside. They're out of the sun, I can lock the door, and I'm still able to pass my solar wire inside so they can be charging while I do that. Other people use this hatch and pull like a little kitchen sprayer out. They tee it into their plumbing and then they actually have water on the outside of their camper. You can even run it up to one of those propane powered showers for hot showers on the outside of the camper. Other people use Christmas lights and plug them inside. There's a number of ways we can use one of these. I've been wanting one for a while, so today we're gonna install one. So these are really inexpensive and they're pretty easy to install. The first thing we have to do is figure out where we want to install one of these. You can cut them anywhere you don't have a stud or some wiring in the wall here. You could cut it right into the cabin. Obviously that's not something that I want to do, but sometimes you have cabinets like I do on the front of my camper and you can install it there and then the wire passes inside a cabinet. That's a convenient place to do it. For me, I'm gonna install mine back here, right where the 30 amp outlet is and the water fill nozzle is. That's gonna pass this outlet or this pass through into the base cabinet in my galley. This is going to pass the interior portion of the cable entry inside this base cabinet. So when I run a wire through, it'll be inside this base cabinet and out of the way. I could cut a hole through and put some trim pieces if I wanna pass the wire through. I could even just use this cabinet door to do this. I could place a power station here, run my refrigerator on it, close the galley door and still get a solar charge here. But there's one more reason why this is the ideal placement for me. This placement is ideal because my load center and converter is right here. That means all of the wires going inside my camper come back to one location. So if I want to tinker later or tie into things, install an inside charge controller, I'll be able to have this pass through right in the cavity where all of the wires for the camper run. This is going to be additionally helpful for me. So once you've selected your location, you're going to get a hole saw that fits the type of cable entry you're using. You could use three and a half, three and five eighths. They'll both work with the cable entry that I'm including in my description. But once it's time to drill that hole, we want to be really careful about placements. It's really hard to get a do over here. Now I have a photograph of how my camper is made. So I know where the vertical studs go here. I have a nice opening here. That's why the manufacturer placed their 30 amp shore power and the water fill here. So placing it beside this is gonna be key for me. If you don't have these photographs with your camper, a good stud finder will find wood studs, it'll find wires, it'll find metal studs, but you really have to be careful. Be sure of what you're doing. If you're not, it's easier to cut a little probe hole from the inside. It'll give you an opportunity to look where the stud is or where any wires or gas lines or anything is running on your camper. It's much easier to fix that inside hole than through the skin of your camper. So I want you to be sure of where you're drilling before you do this. For me, I know where my location is, so I'm ready to get started. So when lining this up, some folks like to really keep with the symmetry of their camper. I'd really rather this be in the most convenient place. If that means moving it up and down and kind of breaking the symmetry here, that doesn't bother me. I put it in the place where it goes. You can mark it up. You make sure that you're in a good location. And you've marked your center point. Some folks use a little nail set and just put a dent in there and that helps your drill bit when you're using a hole saw to kind of find a good steady place to drill your hole. <laughs> so 
so now the nerve wracking point is over for me. I've drilled through the outside, there's nothing in here. The framework actually runs along this uh, furnace port here, and the first stud is back here where the galley ends. I move the insulation to the side. If any of you were ever curious about how your bushwhacker is made, it's just a thin piece of Luon with painted 040 aluminum on the outside. Very, very thin stuff here, but it's high quality and it lasts a long time. I'm now going to drill through the inside wall and I'm going to do it from the exterior. Obviously I could line that up and come from the inside, but this is my preferred way of doing this. Be careful of what's underneath your galley. It's a good time now to double check and pull any wires or propane lines back. And we're through. Okay, so now it's time to just clean this up a little bit. Everyone has their own technique with hole saws. I recommend going from a slow speed and building speed as you go. You see that I bound up a couple times. I really just tried to walk my way through this hole and not rush. Now, my cable hatch is gonna fit in there really nicely. We're gonna have to do something to seal this up first. Some people might want to take the extra steps here and fill this cavity with spray insulation, let it dry and cut it back out. There's a lot of uh, really comprehensive ways to do this job. That's not what this company did with any of these other entries and it's not what I'm going to be doing today. So we're going to seal up this uh, cable hatch and I'm going to show you how to put it in. So to make a watertight seal on the exterior, we're gonna cover this little flange with what's called butyl tape. I'll put a link in my description. You won't need this much. I'll try to include a smaller section. This stuff is really good. I'm using three quarter and that's probably gonna make a little cleanup at the end. You could get away with half inch on this job. This butyl tape is like a rubber double-sided tape. It's what RV manufacturers put your windows in with, your roof vent. It smushes together like a gasket and it's permanent. It does a really good job. I do have some tips for you if you've never worked with butyl tape before. For starters, throw it in the refrigerator for a couple hours before you work with it. It still makes an excellent uh, seal and it's easy to work with, but it doesn't stick to your fingers like bubble gum. If you're finding that it is sticking to your fingers, especially on a hot day, just wet your hands with water. You don't have to put any soap on them or anything, but your hands being wet will prevent it from sticking. So right now we're just gonna make a ring around this flange and we'll get started. So I just did a quick job here. I'm working on my own camper, but this material is going to squeeze out and fill the voids when we put the exterior screws in. It makes for an excellent gasket. So we have full coverage here. I'm now ready to slide this in. Just make sure you orient it properly. get everything aligned, and then I just firmly press the plug in, and we're ready to drive some screws. So I have some real small stainless steel screws. Remember what we're drilling in here, so there's not much that we have to do here. I take these small screws and I just drive them in top first, then bottom. <laughs> Now we're done. This cable hatch can open and close. It can partially open. It fits flat cords really well. And everything we have to work with now will easily pass into the galley space under the cabinet. So there's one final modification that really makes this the most useful for me. I'm going to put a little access panel underneath my load center. I cut this shape out, eventually I made it a square. When you see this little horseshoe, I was walking my way over to find the stud. 
I'd much rather put this in up against a stud than center it out in the hollow wall, but that's up to you. Take the load center out. Make sure you can reach down and pull these wires back. Take your time. If you're not comfortable cutting in a wall that has wires in it, don't do this step. Get someone to do it for you. But I take this little access panel and I'll do a close up. But now I have the ability to pull wires into the cabin. You can mount this using screws, especially now that I walked over towards the stud, but you can also use double-sided tape. I wouldn't use the butyl tape. I'd use some like 3M double-sided tape to put this in, and that's gonna do a good secure job. This is multi-purpose here. Not only do I have access to all of the wires that are coming to my load center, but I can actually see from here into the galley. I can actually reach my hand underneath the base cabinet in the galley now. So this is gonna make it a one or two minute job to pull something like my coaxial for my cell phone booster. The antenna goes outside and the amplifier goes inside. It makes it really easy. Now, the last reason why I wanted to do this is it now gives me access behind this wall to do future modifications. There's only so many times you could take your load center out before you strip those screws. So if there's something that I'm using a lot, like a solar charging cable, I could put an Anderson port or an MC4 port right next to this. I can install a coaxial port if I wanna hook to a campground TV. I don't do that, but it's, it's an option. By putting this access panel here, I can reach my hand back if I wanna install another 12 volt outlet. So for me, this was the best way to go about this. I can now easily pull wires from inside to outside, and I have some pass-through capability within my camper. So I hope this video helped you out today. I hope that you feel more confident to try to do this modification yourself. But then again, I don't know if anyone will make it to the end of a video about cable hatch installation. I'll find out later. But uh, if you appreciate the video, help me out with the like and the subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys next time.